Jesus' mighty name. Let's give a hand clap to Jesus. Let's give a big hand clap to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. You can take your wonderful seat in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. You're most welcome this evening service. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to talk about something brief. But I want to appreciate the opportunity the man of God has given me to share with us today. Thank you so much, Mami, for coming, being with us this evening. Also, want to appreciate you for coming. You can clap your hand for yourself. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to talk about divine intervention. Supernatural intervention. Praise the Lord. Amen. But I will start from a certain angle. Uh, we have seen in the Bible, Bible. series of it. We can open one to the other, to the other, to the other. We see a normal man somewhere, somehow, produce results that is beyond his ability, beyond his qualification, beyond his understanding. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when you check the life, you realize there are some bit of intervention from above in the life of that person. But even that person was bound to live a ordinary life. And have a ordinary life like any other person. We see no upon favor with God. And God intervened before the flood came. And gave him the escape route. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And Noah and his family was saved. We see Abraham, Abraham. coming in. Kabino. The man that was whole, he was called when he was 74 years. But, but at, at the end of it, we found them having a child. And no Ankilatin. And Sarah, who was barren. Sarah there was some supernatural intervention. We, saw, we, we can also see David being the last born. According to the custom of Israel, first born is honored as the father of the, of the home. Because instead of the father, the first born is honored as the father. But we realize God changes everything. And he went for the last born who was dumb. He was meant to take care of animals. Praise the Lord. Amen. And then he became the king. Praise the Lord. Amen. We found Solomon who was actually according to human judgment he could not be the king. Could not be the heir of the throne. Because there was a lot of scandal between the mother and the father. The way David got the mother, Bethsheba, was through fornication, probably adultery. But God still chose from that woman and made that man a king. There was even a plan to announce another king, the son of David. Everything was already organized. And that when that information was leaked, and that very day, David decided to crown 
Solomon to be the king. We can go on and go on and go on. Praise the Lord. Amen. I still want to say that in our time, it is still possible. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is possible in every situation of your life, in whatever you are going through, in our generation, in this world. They can still be supernatural intervention. Meaning, ordinary me and you can produce results that is beyond human understanding. Praise the Lord. Amen. Not by your own ability. The Bible said, not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of God. Praise the Lord. Amen. But all those things to happen, there's also certain principles in the Word of God that we need to know. And one of the principles I want to talk about today is prayer principles. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's one of the ways to invoke supernatural intervention. When we talk about prayer, I know prayer has been taught. Many, maybe to, to start us to pray, sometimes to teach us the importance of prayer, but if, before we even talk about importance and anything of prayer, there are two fundamental questions that anyone needs to, to, uh, to, to ask and answer. The first question is why to pray? Why should we pray? The second question is how to pray? The first question why to pray, it tends to investigate the reason why we should pray. But how to pray mainly deal with the effectiveness of prayer. That if you are to have results through prayer, then you have to pray this way. That is effectiveness of prayer. The question of how will come in. But today, I want to talk about why we should pray. Why prayer? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, this question will take us into different uh, illustrations in the Bible. We are, going to, we are going to read many scriptures, if possible, but I am sure that uh, God will help us. Jesus taught about prayer. When he was here, he prayed. But he also taught his disciple to pray. He also taught people to pray. When he was teaching about prayer, in Matthew 16, 5 to 7, when Jesus was talking about prayer in those scriptures, Jesus used a certain word. He, teach, he, he, he said when and when his disciples were come to, to the it is 6, 5 to 7. Matthew. Said, and when thou prayest, okay, put for me NIV. NIV. Okay, that's okay also. And when you pray, do not be like hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now when Jesus was talking about prayer, there are certain words I want to I want to quote to guide us. When he was talking about prayer, there are words he used. He used the word when you pray. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's also when you go down also about fasting and praying, you realize he also used the word when you fast. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, Jesus did not use the word if. Jesus used the word when. Praise the Lord. We understand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Jesus used the word when you pray. He did not use the word if. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. 
Now the difference between if and when is that if is used to introduce a possible or unreal situation or condition. Well, it may happen or it may not. I mean, it it conditions you to certain things for something to happen. For example, if you don't if you don't pay a bus, you will not go to Kampala. That means your going is conditioned that you pay. So we can easily doubt your going. Because we don't know whether you have the money. But if I said when you go to Kampala, I am sure you are going. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am not doubting it. I am sure you are going. Now when Jesus, Jesus did not choose to use the word if. Because if he used the word if, meaning he's telling us we can either choose to pray or not to pray. But he used the word when, knowing that all of us going to pray. In other words, according to him, prayer is a must. There's no question about it. It is the same with fasting. When he was talking about prayer, he did not condition it that if you fast, no, he said when you fast, knowing that fasting is compulsory to our life. Praise the Lord. Whether pastor announces it or he doesn't announce it, it is part of us. Praise the Lord. Amen. So one of the things I want you to know why we should pray is that prayer is compulsory for a believer. Praise the Lord. Amen. Prayer is part of us. Now, when you begin to see biblical facts, the, the truth in, in the Bible about prayer, you will realize without prayer, certain things doesn't happen. At some point, we are going to look at the reason why. You realize nothing moves without prayer. According to Bible. In the book of, in, in the book of James 4, 1 to 3, I want to see that scripture. James 4, 1 to 3. If you are there, James, 1, uh, James 4, 1 to 3. He said, What causes you fight and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that? But within you, you want something, but don't get it. You kill and you kill and covet. But you cannot have what you want. You quarrel and fight. You do not, you do not have because you do not ask. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you read down. The other one, it responds to the second uh, question, how to pray. But this one, it responds to why we pray. He said, said you have a lot of desires. You need a lot of things in your life. And they even look at it based on on your behaviors. That you really need many things. But he said you do not have it all what you need because you do do not pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Now he did not condition us to to anything else. But he conditioned us to prayer. Meaning prayer is one of the windows that open doors for provision. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, if you don't pray, that means you don't have. That's what James said. That you desire. You even kill to have it. Can you, can you imagine that energy, trying to use the energy to kill? Say you do whatever you want to have it. But he said you don't still get it. Because you do not ask. Praise the Lord. Amen. If it conditions us to prayer, praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So prayer 
is very important in the area of provision. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It doesn't my, it doesn't matter how the club look like. How your connection look like. But this one he told us clear. That we don't have because we do not pray. And down you can go down and he said. If you pray you pray amiss. You pray amiss because you pray that you consume with your own lust. That talk about the effectiveness. That means somebody will say, but I asked, I prayed. But the second one will say, you did not pray effectively. Because the motive was wrong. But if the motive is right, and you ask, according to scripture, you should have it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now when we see Matthew 7 verse 7 to 8, it, it is clear, he told us, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and the door shall be opened to you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, this one again, hope is begin with us. And it shall be given unto you. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It is still take us to prayer. That if we need anything, we should look at prayer like as one of the avenues we should use to get what we want. We should learn to ask. Now, this asking can be in two, uh, uh, two, in two different dimensions. Number one, asking in prayer Asking God in prayer. And then second one is asking from the very thing that is there. Not moving to the actual place where you can get it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So it is still nail it down. That if for us to have, we need to pray. First John 5.14 says, This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything, praise the Lord, Amen. according to his will, he shall give us anything. He did not say something. And he even used the word confidence. He said, this is the confidence confidence that we have in him. In other words, he's talking from the point of proof. There's no doubt about it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And if you ask, why do you pray? He said, we pray because we know when we ask anything in his name, he shall give. According to his will, he shall give. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If we ask anything, this is still take us to prayer. That we need to we need to pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. We need to pray. And I want you to know that if a man doesn't pray, there's nothing that man will receive. If a man doesn't pray, it is difficult to talk about divine intervention. Praise the Lord. Amen. Without prayer. And what, why, why? What is the reason? Let's talk about the reason. Let's go to the foundation of it. Anything that you find in the Bible up to Revelation have the shadow. The shadow of it, it is in Genesis. No. Every fullness you see, whether in the gospel, in any book, whether in Revelation, the fullness of it, the shadow, is in Genesis. That's why Genesis is very important for the understanding of the Bible till the end. In fact, it reveals Christ even more than almost any other book. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want us to begin from 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 the the blueprint of it. In Genesis 1, 26 to 31, let's talk about the creation. God begin uh, put a plan and he said, then God said, let us make man in our image 
in our likeness. And let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Okay? I, I, I want you to see. Okay. First, first, go back again. There's something I want us to, I want us to notice. Okay, let's notice the first three lines. Said, then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over. That is very important. Down you can see what this rule over fish, right? Of the sea, the birds of the air, of the, the livestock, over all the earth. And over all the creatures that move along the ground. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, I want you to listen. When God was creating man, there's something we need to understand. That when God created man, number one, He said, in our own image, in our own likeness. And where are we going to put them? We are going to put them on the earth. Now, we know that when God created the earth, I mean, in God's creation, God created the physical things. And God also created the, the, the spiritual things. We have this physical realm. And we have the spiritual realm. Now, when God talks about the earth, that is the physical realm. That is the physical world. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But God did not only create the, the, the physical world. He also created a, a spiritual world. But for the physical world, the earth, where there is fish, where there is bird of the air, where there is livestock, everything. He said, let's create man in our own image, in our own likeness. And let's put them there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Why? That they may rule. That they may have the same authority that we have. Let them have it over the physical world. When God created man, the main purpose was for man to rule on earth here. Man to have authority on earth. In other words, he put man as a manager on earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. From that day, God created man. God could not come and rule over the earth without involvement of his manager. Praise the Lord. Amen. The earth was covenanted to you, to, to us, to you was covenanted to humans. That's why when God was creating them, He said in our likeness and our image and likeness, but the Bible says, He picked the soil from the ground. He breathed in it. And then He became a living soul. He was a living soul, but with physical bodies. So that the physical world may understand. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the man is physical. God put man in the physical body. His image in the physical body. That may be able to rule over the physical heart. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now from that day forward, God could not do anything on earth without involvement of any physical human. Number two, from that day, any spiritual being does not have power over the heart unless man allows. Praise the Lord. Amen. From that day, let me repeat, any spiritual being does not have power. Lost its authority. 
on the physical world. Even God himself submitted himself to his own principles. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, let's, let's, let's move to verse 2. I mean, chapter 2. I'll show you something there. Praise the Lord. Amen. Chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 15 to 20. Let's see what Paul, 15 to 20. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Yes. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden. But you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Well, I will make a helper suitable for him. Well, now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature was its name. So the man gave names names to all the living stock, all the livestock, the birds of the hair, and all the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper uh, found, was found. After when God created man. You must know that God is sovereign. In his sovereignty, he needed not even to tell man, don't eat this. He would provide his own means to, pre to, to protect them from going there. But he realized he had already given them authority. So when he came to them, it was a counsel. He was giving them counsel. He was advising them that if you eat of this, you will die. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why when they were taking it and eating it, God did not send fire to destroy them because he knew that they already have power on the physical heart. He had already given them. Okay, let me go. Now, verse 19, 20, we realize, when now God realized he had not finished his creation well, of, of course, the Bible tells us he finished after creating man and he rested on the seventh day. But you should know that animals had no name. God needed to continue to give them. But as long as on earth here, he needed to find man to do the job. And the Bible said, he brought animals of its kind to man, to name. And whatsoever name, man gives to that animal. God says, that's true, that's true. He never disagreed with man. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Because he has given them power to act on a heart ear as his own attorney, as his own manager. Whatever a man permit on a heart, man has power on the physical heart. Whatever man permit on a heart has power to be fulfilled. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, listen to me. Any spiritual thing any spiritual being does not have power on this earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Unless he finds a physical man. When Satan wants to destroy the earth, he could not use anything else. He entered the physical snake and came to convince man. If man were not to consent to the idea of Satan, Satan would be powerless 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Satan would be powerless. But when they listen to Satan, they get permission to Satan to operate on earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be it angels, be it any spiritual thing, will never prevail on earth if man is in disagreement with it. Praise the Lord. Amen. It will never function on earth here. We can talk about it from scripture to scripture. You will realize for God to allow spiritual force, any spiritual force to intervene on earth, he first convinced a man to give permission. Praise the name of Amen. the Lord. Amen. He first convinced any man, he will find a man. That's why the Bible says that I sought, I seek a man who can stand in a gap. That if I want to destroy my people, he will pray, he will pray, will intercede for my people. I find that man. Because even when God has purpose to destroy the earth, if there is a man, who can bargain with God? God is still able to hear. Praise the Lord. Amen. When David sinned, God, it would not be possible. No, no. God is sovereign, but you need to know that the Bible said He exalted His word above His name. So He honored His word. Now, when David sinned by killing Uriah. Do you know that God wanted to, wanted to punish David? But God had to find a prophet to, to pronounce that judgment. Without finding a prophet, prophet Nathan, that thing would not be effective. Praise the Lord. Amen. God will look for a man. He will look for somebody. Why is it Satan need a man? And God need man. Because for their plan to be successful, they need a physical man. Because they were not, they were not covenanted to this physical world. Now, there's a scripture I want to read to you. Probably you have not seen that scripture. The Bible said, in Psalms 115, verse 16. Let's look at that scripture. Psalms 115, verse 16. Psalms 115, verse 16. Wow. Psalms 115. Okay. The highest heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth he has given to man. Praise the Lord. Amen. The highest what? The highest what? The highest what? Now listen, the heavens follow. You realize the heavens talk about the realm. Talk about the spiritual realm. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now, heavens and the earth, these are two different things. The earth is a physical realm. But the heavens are spiritual, uh, spiritual, spiritual realm. Now, the Bible is clear that the heavens is the Lord. The highest heaven is the Lord. But the earth, he has given it to the Son of Man. He has given it to you and me. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That is the principles that work. I want to give you illustration in Bible. Different illustration in the Bible. When Jeremiah prophesied doom, he spoke the word of God. And then, they arrested him and put him in, in, in prison. God still came to Jeremiah and, and told Jeremiah, Ask of me 
And I will show you great and remarkable things. Things you know not. Praise the Lord. Amen. But the, by the way, you are sovereign. You are sovereign. In, in the Bama you are sovereign. In the Bama you have Jit. power to do whatever you want. How dare you they still they ask me to ask you? Why don't, they don't they you just show me to motivate me since I am in prison? But he said ask. Because asking is a permission that there should be an intervention beyond your abilities. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why if you don't ask, that asking is a principle. Prayer is a principle that every spiritual being respect. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you cannot ignore prayer because prayer make you up another intervention from somewhere else. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That's why they always tell you that words carry force because there's spiritual force that, w that will function by the words that come out of your mouth. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why they tell you words are spiritual. Now, prayer is important for us to understand that we know the Bible said, no man of the flesh shall see God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, we, the flesh is also limited to the earth. The heavens, the spiritual, the spiritual realm, you can access it by flesh. And that's what the Bible said. Now, prayer cut between the two. Prayer is like a bridge between the, 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 the spiritual and the physical world. When you pray, God gives you access to his spiritual realm. God gives you access to access the things that are in the spiritual. And also God intervenes on earth. That's why for God to save the world, Christ needed to come on earth in form of human for him to effect the plan of God well. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And do you know that even when Jesus came by the power of the Holy Spirit, it, he was prophesied it was a prophecy that Messiah will come. And then when the angels came, and angels were talking, was talking to Mary, do you know that the angel could not leave until Mary gave permission? Then let it happen to me according to your word. Immediately he left. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because he knew that it is now done. Amen. Do you know Amen. that for the angel Gabriel to come to a virgin woman, Amen. there was two people who were praying Amen. that they will not die Amen. before they see the salvation Amen. of the Lord. Now, Christ, I mean, Christ has been prophesied. In the book of Luke 24, verse, uh, verse 25 to 27, he said to them, how foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophet has spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things, and then enter his glory? And then he continued, he said, beginning with Moses, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Now, when he said beginning with Moses, and what, what we, do we know about Moses? We know about the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch, the five books of the Bible. That is Genesis. Uh, we know Exodus. We know uh, uh, Leviticus. We know Numbers. We know Deuteronomy. All those are the book of Moses. He said he explained to them what was written in scripture concerning himself, concerning who Jesus, he was talking to his disciples who were going to Emmaus because they were reasoning among themselves. And Jesus just told them, you are foolish. Because all this thing has been written from time 
them ago, all the prophets talk about me. Now, Jesus, the promise has been a long time ago. But in, it was not fulfilled. But there were two people, Anna and Simeon. They were praying. They said, Anna, after losing her husband, never got married again. He re she remained in the temple. Praying. When she carried the baby Jesus, she told God, your servant can now rest because I have seen the salvation of Israel. The reason why Christ came in that era because there were two people who prayed that they will not die until they see it. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Christ had to come. When the angel came, Mary had to give permission. When Angels appear, when the angel appeared to, to Zachariah, because they had no children, and then he said, your wife shall have a child. You shall name him John. Zachariah immediately began to interfere. And the angel said, you will not speak until it is fulfilled. Why? Because if Zachariah were to speak, it would not happen. He would have bought the plan of God. Because he has power on the physical world. Praise the Lord. Amen. He has power on this physical world. When, the, when God had promised with Abraham, he said, after 400 years, I shall deliver your children, your descendants from slavery. They stayed for 430 years. There was no any salvation. But when a generation began to pray, he looked for a man. He did not send angels. He looked for a man, Moses. And he said, I have heard the prayer of my people, Israel. And I have seen how they are being oppressed. You mean you were blind before we prayed? Because prayer invoke events. And when prayer happens, when permission is given to supernatural, the heart cannot remain the same. How you hear what I'm saying? How you hear what I'm saying? Moses was on assignment because of the prayers of some people who were praying. They even didn't know the content of the covenant. But they are saying, we cannot stay here. I hear what I'm saying. When Jeremiah prophesied that after 70 years you shall be delivered from your captivity. You shall return. They were there. No sign of deliverance. But Daniel said, I when I, I understood by the, by the books that our season of slavery is over. He said, the moment I understood, I began to pray. When he began to pray, angels, angel Gabriel was released and the prince of Persia held him. But Daniel did not stop praying. He continued to pray. After 21 days, the angels came. What did he say? Very important. He said, from the day you began to pray, I was released. Your prayer was answered. Have you heard what I'm saying? That season, according to God's calendar, was over. But they could not, God could not come just like that. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do you know that the Holy Spirit, because His Spirit, He could not come on earth just on, without men getting involved. Jesus told them, yes, do not leave Jerusalem until you are endured with power. And what did they do? They engaged in prayer. When they prayed for 10 days, the Spirit of God came upon them. The Bible said, as they were praying, the tongues of fire appeared on them came from the east as a rushing wind. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. In a nutshell, if you don't pray, 
Everything about you remain at stake. You have supernatural power. You have angels that are responsible for everything about you. But they cannot move because they don't have power on the physical earth until you engage them in prayer. Praise the Lord. Amen. You are escaped from temptation. It is not in the hand of God. It is in your mouth. Jesus said, Pray that you may escape temptation. Pray that you may not fall in temptation. You are escaped from temptation. It's not up with God. It is in your mouth. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says, Whatsoever you allow it on earth. Whatsoever you permit on earth. Whatsoever you release on earth. It is released in heaven. It is allowed in heaven. It is permitted in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth. Whatever you resist on earth. Whatever you refuse on earth. It is resisted in heaven. It is refused in heaven. It is not allowed in heaven. You remain bound in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. So our problem is not that heaven doesn't care. No, our problem is that those who should pray, they don't care to pray. Because if they care to pray, there will always be supernatural intervention. When James and Peter was arrested, James was beheaded, James was killed, and the church began to pray. The Bible said an earnest prayer was made for Peter. When they began to pray, angels were released and broke every chain, opened the doors of prison, and opened another gate and led Peter out to the streets. When Peter was walking, they were still praying. Peter came and knocked the door. And when the maids came, and they asked who is there, said Peter, said you are lying. That is the angels of Peter. That is his angel. Peter continued to knock. And they realized that is Peter. They pray. But if they were not to pray, their Peter would die also. James was killed because of negligence. They did not pray. They did not take prayer as serious. But as they began to pray, the force of heaven were open. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When the army surrounded Elijah and Gehazi, Gehazi said, we are finished. Elijah said, Lord, open his eyes so that he may see. The moment Elijah allowed in that prayer, Elisha, Gehazi began to see chariots. Praise the Lord. Listen to me, child of God. In the midst of those witchcraft you are fearing, there are chariots ready to enforce heaven's authority on your, on your issue. On the fear of what, whoever you think wants to destroy your life, whatever you think it is against you, there is a force that is greater than them. If you know and you engage in prayer, you will begin to realize you are stronger than them. You are more than them. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When Paul and Silas were in prison, they began to praise God and sing. Speaking the word of God, angels were released. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? There is nothing that we see in scripture that happens without men praying. Prayer is the principles for us to access the, the realm of the supernatural. That's why when, man, when a man began to pray, begin to pray, or any of us begin to pray, you will realize that person begin to be different. That person will behave different. Listen to me. As long as you are on earth here, you have power to allow. You have power to disallow. You have power to, to, to change. You have power to to bring anything you want. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. What our generation needs is men who pray. 
Even Paul, Paul, Paul knows that he could not preach well without prayer. He said, pray for me that the word of God may have free course. Praise the Lord. Even when you're a preacher, you must develop a prayer culture. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You must have a prayer culture. Without prayer, you can preach nice words, but if it doesn't have free cause in the heart of men, if it doesn't have access in the heart of anyone, to do prayer, you can access the house. To do prayer, you can visit White House. To do prayer, you can change a man. To do prayer, you can change your family. To do prayer, you can change a clan. To do prayer, you can change a nation. I hear what I'm talking about. Because God is waiting for only one man to just give permission and say, God, I give you permission over my nation. Intervene in Uganda. Intervene in our nation. Lord, intervene in our family. Lord, about my brothers. Lord, about my sisters. Jesus said, Pray to the Lord of Abbas that he may send laborers. But Abbas is white. But they could not come until certain men need to pray. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. This man, there's a man we know, Evans, prayed for 13 years for revival in Wales. 13 years without stopping and telling God, bent me. Bent me more. Bent me more. Give me ways or I die. Bend me more. Give me ways or I die. If you can't give me ways, kill me in your presence. He never stopped for 13 years. 13 years. And when there's a revival, that revival did not respect his academic qualification. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, the, man, the man of a Jusa revival. He said before he preached a sermon, he would pray for three hours straight. And he made a box. He made, he made a box. A box of wood. A wooden box. He will come and sit in the middle of people and cover and put the box on his head. So that he doesn't see anyone. He will pray for three hours. When he comes to preach, the service, he even doesn't know how the service ends. Because of the chaos of the Holy Ghost. They said they could sing song and they don't repeat it. He will come and lead one song today. Tomorrow they even don't know that song. Every day when he comes, they sing song they don't repeat. Heavenly song. They said the glory of God could move. That everyone would see like a smoke in the house. And some children could go and play with it. This is a man. But he prayed. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sometimes God allows some people's gems to die. That they may understand the power they have. That they may pray to save their people. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Before you quit, please pray. Before you start, please pray. Prayer changes everything. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want you to know God is interested in your case. God is interested in your victory. God is interested in your testimony. God is interested in your family. God is interested in all that concerns you for his own glory. But he wants you to pray. And could you engage God in your affairs? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That's why I tell people, stay alive. The day you die, you cease to be relevant or not. When people see you, they will set you away. You become ghosts. You become unwanted. When you are in the physical like that, you have power of influence on this earth. Praise the Lord. Amen. God has given it to you and me. Rise up on your feet. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Power is, prayer is so important that Jesus, God did not leave us to pray on our own. 
He even gave us a helper. He gave us the Holy Spirit that we may not get tired of praying. That's why Paul now says, pray without ceasing. Praise the Lord. He said, in our infirmities, the Holy Spirit helped us to pray. He helped us. He grown in us with a groaning that cannot be expressed by mouth. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. It is only through prayer that you can access heavenly language. You begin to speak the language of heaven, the language of angels. Through prayer, you begin to command angels in their own language and if they are released in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. And begin to pray. Sale coparado supalakata. Kasile boloko yabados. Marako pakata la bakaya. Zile leko yoboko tolobo. Rale bakata zoboko yaba. Leko parako yabados. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to God. In the name of Jesus. He said, if I shut down heaven and I cause, oh yes, no rain to rain, and if I, if I send locusts, allow locusts to come, he said, if people who are called by my name, they shall humble themselves, repent of their sin, yes, and pray. He said, I will open the heavens, the floodgates of heaven, and I shall allow rain. I will open in the name of Jesus. Lord, we call upon your name. In the name of Jesus. Remember our nation, O oh God. Remember our family, O oh God. Remember our hearts, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are healing us. You are healing us. In the name of Jesus Christ. We refuse to die. We refuse to die. We refuse to die. We refuse to die. We refuse in the name of Jesus to fail in Jesus' name. We are the success in our time. We are the success in our generation. The hand of God is upon us. Let there be a divine intervention. Let there be supernatural intervention. Let there be divine intervention. Let there be angelic intervention. In our finances, O God. In our marriage, O God. We rebuke witchcraft. We rebuke sorcery. We rebuke divination. Every force of darkness. Whatever is meant to cast stranger. Whatever is meant to kill. Whatever is meant to destroy. Shall not destroy us. We rebuke every wasting spirit. We rebuke every demonic power. We rebuke every process of hell. You shall not be vain. Go, Sapali Katakado. Go, Sarade Keneva. Hurraba Katalaba. Take control of our family. Our family. Control of our children. Control of our economy. Control of our finances. Control of our nation. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever shall not destroy our marriage, shall not destroy our family. In the name of Jesus, every wasting spirit, every power of the enemy, every power of darkness, shall not prevail, shall not prevail, shall not prevail. Shall not be vain. We pray of love. 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 We p